The worm gear was bored for the shaft using an end mill held in a holder I made. In order to creep up to the required dimension and obtain a precision fit. The worm shaft shall be secured using a grub screw acting on a flat on the shaft. If the shaft fits loose in the worm, the grub screw would cause the shaft's and worm's axis to be out of alignment, resulting in uneven operation. The worm was drilled all the way through so that the tight-fitting shaft can be punched out. Here I am tapping a hole for a grub screw that shall engage a flat on the worm shaft. I am using my torque limited tap wrench. It is spring loaded to engage the tap in the workpiece. The tap handle slips when the applied torque exceeds a set amount. This prevents tap breakage. The torque is adjusted by feel using a knob on the handle. This button locks the handles to the chuck spindle to allow the chuck to be loosened or tightened. A center drill was used to cut a taper in the other end of the worm. It shall be used to ride on a center on the body. This rusted out shaft shall be turned into the worm shaft. It shall connect the index crank to the worm gear. That's a perfect fit. No binding. And turns freely. The square collet block I made is used to hold the worm shaft. A flat is milled on its end, this will be engaged by a grub screw to key the shaft to the worm. The other end of the shaft is milled so it can engage the slot in the index crank of the dividing mechanism. The required cut is set, and it is repeated on the other side of the shaft by simply flipping the collet block 180 degrees and registering the collet nut against the vise. The index crank needs to be adjusted but must also positively engage the worm shaft. I need to transfer the three screw holes on the index plate onto the index plate flange. I am using a 6 to 5 mm drill guide. The hole is then tapped. I then rotate the index plate to drill the next hole and screw it in place. This is the worm shaft. The index plate and sector arms fit here. The plate fits on this flange, this is the worm gear and the worm wheel. There is no binding in the worm and wool mechanism. The worm needs to be parallel to the top of the body. and for its assembly to be parallel to the top of the body. I need to ensure alignment before I mark the location of the mounting screws with this pin punch.
This center is adjustable to take out any backlash in the worm gear and holds it in place. Once the other side is screwed in place, I shall locate the holes in this side. I plan to widen this hole so that the worm gear can be pivoted in order to adjust its engagement with the wheel. I ended up using the bracket as a guide to drill the holes for the retaining screws. The holes in the bracket were widened to accept the screws and those in the body tapped. The other bracket was located and clamped to drill its mounting screw holes. And the other bracket is also assembled. This is the final component, the lock actuating lever. This is the section that shall be inside the flexure. The end is threaded. A section of the other end is also reduced in diameter and threaded. This is the finished part. I shall make the next part from this offcut. The part is drilled. Then tap to form a nut. It is threaded on the rod. So the outside diameter can be turned. The nut is taken to the mill where I cross drill a hole for the actuating handle. I shall use this ball handle I made for some project but which remained unused. These are the components of the lock handle, the reason for this complication will be soon apparent. The handle is pressed into the nut. The nut screws onto the end of the threaded rod. And a grub screw is threaded in at the other end. is screwed into the flexure. The lock is tightened. The index plate is assembled for reference. The grub screw allows me to adjust the handle where I want. Perfect. The worm wheel retaining nut is machined from a repurposed nut.
the needle roller bearing is exposed to ingress of debris. I shall make a cover from this piece of tubing. It is fitted over a large wooden dowel. First the end is cleaned. And then part it to the required length. Now no chips can get in there. I made a cover out of plastic for the angular contact bearing. The nut has a spigot to contact the inner race and the cover fits over it. 